The Tsar Bomba The king of all bombs. In 1961, the Soviet Union built the biggest nuclear bomb ever made. They called it the Tsar Bomba. Officially, it was just a test. Unofficially, it was a message. We can end everything if we want to. The Tsar Bomba was 100 megatons on paper. But even at 50 megatons, it was 3,000 times more powerful than Hiroshima. When they dropped it over an island in the Arctic, the flash could be seen 1,000 kilometers away. That's farther than the distance from Moscow to Paris. Windows shattered in Norway. The mushroom cloud soared six times higher than Mount Everest. It was so powerful, Soviet engineers scaled it down at the last minute, because the plane that dropped it might not survive. Russia's Satan II missile can carry four Tsar Bombas at once. A single launch could erase entire countries from the map. No nation has ever used a bomb that big in war, because if someone did, others would follow. The Cobalt Bomb, the Doomsday Device. Imagine a bomb designed not just to destroy cities, but to make the planet uninhabitable for decades. That's what physicist Lee Hu Zil Ard proposed during the Cold War. He called it a cobalt bomb, a theoretical nuclear weapon that would spread radioactive cobalt across the globe. Here's how it works. A normal hydrogen bomb explodes, but it's wrapped in cobalt. The explosion turns that cobalt into cobalt-60, a radioactive isotope that poisons the Earth's surface. Unlike regular fallout, cobalt-60 wouldn't just dissipate. It would linger for years, silently killing every living thing that breathes or eats. No one ever built one. But it's still theoretically possible, which means someone probably has. Castle Bravo. In 1954, the United States tested its most powerful nuclear bomb ever. They called it Castle Bravo, its first dry fuel hydrogen bomb test. It was supposed to be 6 megatons. The blast yielded 15 megatons, 250% higher than expected, because the scientists miscalculated the fuel. The blast vaporized part of Bikini Atoll. A fireball 4.5 miles wide lit up the Pacific. Radioactive fallout spread 160 kilometers downwind, all covered in deadly ash. A Japanese fishing crew was caught in it. Dozens were sick. This accident proved fallout could cross oceans, forcing the 1963 Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, and creating global radiation monitoring networks still used now. Castle Bravo remains the most powerful U.S. nuclear test ever conducted, and a key reason we track radiation worldwide. The Project Pluto missile. In the 1960s, the U.S. military had a wild idea. What if you built a nuclear-powered cruise missile that never had to land? They called it Project Pluto. The missile would fly just meters above the ground, moving faster than sound. It would drop bombs as it went, but it would also be a weapon by itself because its engine was a bare, unshielded nuclear reactor that would spew radioactive exhaust across everything it flew over, killing people, animals, and ecosystems just by passing by. And the worst part, it had no pilot, and it didn't need to return. Once launched, it would just fly, until it ran out of targets. The project was cancelled. But not because it was impossible, because even the military realized it was too insane. The Father of All Bombs In 2007, Russia unveiled the Father of All Bombs, a thermobaric weapon not nuclear, but so devastating that it earned its title. It works by spreading a cloud of flammable fuel in the air, then detonating it, creating a vacuum firestorm. It sucks oxygen from the lungs of anyone nearby, and leaves nothing standing. Russia claimed it was four times more powerful than the U.S. mother of all bombs. It creates no radiation, but the pressure wave is enough to turn organs into soup. Was it real? Some doubt it. But if it is, it's another bomb we've never seen in war yet. Operation Fishbowl. During the height of the Cold War, the United States tried something insane. A nuclear bomb. But this time not underground. Not even on Earth. They called it Operation Fishbowl, part of a larger series known as Operation Dominic. The idea detonate nuclear weapons high up in the atmosphere, just to see what would happen. In 1962, they launched a missile carrying a warhead named Starfish Prime, and what followed felt like science fiction. The detonation occurred more than 400 kilometers above Earth. For a moment, the sky lit up with an artificial aurora, a glowing storm seen over one 400 kilometers away. But it wasn't just beautiful, it was dangerous. The blast knocked out dozens of satellites, it fried electronics in Hawaii, thousands of kilometers from ground zero, and it made physicists panic because they realized a terrifying truth. A single high-altitude nuke could blind an entire continent, cripple global communications, and scar the Earth's magnetic field. So they stopped. Not because it failed, but because it worked too well. The data still exists, but the full impact of those detonations. We may not understand it for decades. The RS-28 Sarmat. NATO calls it Satan II a liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missile built by Russia to replace the R-36M. It weighs over 200 tons, launched from underground silos using a gas booster, then ignites its engines in mid-air. Range over 18,000 kilometers, 
enough to strike any target on Earth from Russian territory, payload capacity 10 to 15 nuclear warheads each with independent guidance, can hit multiple cities with one missile, can also carry hypersonic glide vehicles, capable of maneuvering during reentry. Together, they can deliver more than 5 megatons of destruction they're almost impossible to intercept. Once it's launched, nothing can stop it. A single launch could kill millions. Multiple launches could end modern civilization. First tested in 2022, entered combat-ready status in 2023, deployed by Russia's strategic missile forces, Operation Ivy Mike. In 1952, the United States tested a new kind of weapon, not an atomic bomb, something far more powerful. The first full-scale hydrogen bomb, they called the test Ivy Mike. It wasn't a bomb you could drop from a plane. It was so big, it had to be built inside a building on the island of Elugalob. On November 1st, they pushed the button. The fireball was three miles wide in seconds. Temperatures near the blast were hotter than the sun's surface. The shockwave traveled around the world, twice. The explosion released 10.4 megatons of energy. That's 700 times more powerful than Hiroshima. The mushroom cloud rose 17 miles high, more than three times the height of Mount Everest. Alugalab Island didn't just vanish, it was vaporized, leaving a crater over a mile wide and 160 feet deep in the ocean floor. B-41. In 1961, the United States deployed its most powerful nuclear bomb, the B-41. Yield 25 megatons, a three-stage thermonuclear design with the highest U.S. yield-to-weight ratio. Dropped from a B-52, one detonation would flatten a major city, ignite firestorms across entire districts, and push lethal fallout far downwind. Hundreds set on strategic air command alert through the hardest years of the Cold War. In 1976, the B-41 was retired as doctrine shifted to multiple smaller, precise warheads. One device carried the energy of over 1,600 Hiroshimas. The B-83 thermonuclear bomb. The B-83 is the most powerful nuclear bomb in America's current arsenal. It was designed in the late 1970s, but it's still active. Maximum yield 1.2 megatons. That's 80 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. It was built for a specific purpose, to destroy deep underground bunkers. And it can be dropped from high altitude or delivered at low altitude using parachutes for delayed detonation. The B-83 is not a relic. It's been kept combat ready for over 40 years. It's also one of the last gravity bombs with such destructive capacity. In theory, it could vaporize a hardened target buried 300 meters underground or level everything within a 5-kilometer radius. In 2023, the U.S. announced plans to retire the B-83. Now, do you realize something? The bomb dropped on Hiroshima, little boy, wasn't even on this list. Yet it killed over 14,000 people and completely destroyed a city. Imagine that level of destruction and now think about today. The bombs we have now are far more powerful. The ones being developed today could wipe entire countries off the map in a matter of minutes. We live in a world where unchecked power still exists, and it's more dangerous than ever. So stay safe, stay aware, and question how we've arrived at this point. If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button, subscribe for more hard-hitting content, and share your thoughts in the comments. What do you think? Are we heading into a more dangerous future, or is there hope? Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching.